He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Okay, let's check out some questions regarding atomic structure. This first question is asking about atoms with the same atomic number but different mass numbers, and we have some options there. The second question asks the number of neutrons in a zinc 2 plus ion that has mass 70 atomic mass units will be, and we have some options there. Number three, Rutherford's gold foil experiment demonstrated that atoms have, and we have some options there. And then the Bohr model can explain, and we have four options for this as well. So pretty straightforward, multiple choice questions here, just seeing if you understand atomic structure. Uh, if you're not sure how to answer these, check out some of my previous tutorials on the atom and subatomic particles. And when you're ready, give these a try. So for this first question, atoms with the same atomic number but different mass numbers, that is going to be isotopes. Remember, if they have the same atomic number, then they are the same element by definition. And then ions has to do with differing numbers of electrons, and then isobars is a totally different concept altogether. So by definition, isotopes are nuclides that have the same atomic number, meaning they belong to the same element, but they have different mass numbers, like carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14, that sort of a thing. For number two, the number of neutrons in a zinc-2 plus ion with mass 70 atomic mass units is, this is a bit of a trick because it doesn't matter that it's a zinc-2 plus ion. All that we care about is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. And zinc has an atomic number of 30, so in order to get to 70 atomic mass units, that means we're going to have to have 40 neutrons in that nucleus. So we're going to go with D, 40. For number three, Rutherford's gold foil experiment demonstrated that atoms have a nucleus. So we had already demonstrated uh, by J.J. Thompson's cathode ray experiment that electrons exist, and then by extension it was extrapolated that there must also be protons somewhere in an atom uh, because we knew that atoms had a net neutral charge. And so we knew that there were electrons and protons, but we didn't know how they were distributed. So there was a plum pudding model, things like that. Um, but we, so what Rutherford did was to demonstrate that the atom was mostly empty space and that all of the positive charge was concentrated in a nucleus. So that is C, nucleus. And then for four, the Bohr model can explain this is going to be B, the spectrum of any atom or ion containing one electron. So it does work for hydrogen, but then it also works for any other atom that has only one electron. So it works for helium if it's helium plus. It works for lithium if it's lithium two plus for beryllium if it's beryllium 3 plus, etc. So the limiting factor is that it can only have one electron. Beyond that, the math gets very complicated. But given that there can be multiple species with one electron, then B is going to be our answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.